I actually was born in a family with seven siblings. You know, five brothers, then myself and my sister. I wondered how my father fed them. Today with two or three in your family and we have difficulty. But in those days, there were seven kids, my mom and dad, and my grandparents, we all lived together. So life was hard, but in it all, I felt that God had his hand on it. Then later in life, I met my late husband, Arnold, who was a really strong Christian. He memorized every scripture. I mean, he, he read through the whole Bible at least two times a year. And when he asked me to marry him, I was already 40. And I told my dad, um, Arnold asked me to marry him. And, but he's a Christian. Because in the old days, there are a lot of biases between Buddhists and Christianity. And I was shocked when my dad said, any man who loves God is a good man. Go with my blessing. And that was the beginning of my journey with Christ. And as my walk with the Lord improved or increased, um, I realized that when we pray, we don't just pray from our own experience, but we want to pray with the Word of God. Many of you know Arnold was afflicted with kidney cancer. And at that time, we said, why? You know, why God? And God said, why not? And it's just amazing how God holds you. And during this process, though, in the prayer and healing ministry, so many healings taken place, deliverance, um, all by our obedience to serve God. Understanding the scriptures, it says, with God, all things are possible. He gives us that strength and ability. And I think the rest of the walk for my life has been trusting in God. And years goes by and now I'm asking God, how do I, how do I help people get the kind of faith, I mean, to do what I do as He's done? I feel the, the scripture that I lean on is that Jesus said, greater things will we do when He goes to the Father and because He will send us the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, which means God has called us to do all that He did, healing the sick, deliverance, just having miracles happen. And by that obedience, I have to say that I have seen miracles, healing, unbelievable uh, eyesight restored. This one particular story of this Filipino lady came up and she said, I said, yes, what can I pray for you? And she says, oh, I get cataract. And I thought, so you have a Cadillac. I have a Lexus. You know, what difference does it make? And she said, no, I have cataract. I said, yeah, um, so what do you want Jesus to do? She said, I no can see, I no can see. And I just chuckled because I couldn't understand her. And I said, oh, you have cataract. So prayed for her and instantly God healed her. Okay? And she was dancing in the back of the room, just dancing away that I can see, I can see. And those are the miracles of God. And again, I follow the scripture. He said, greater things will we do when he goes to the Father because it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we will serve as a vessel he can use. And that is my, you know, one of my classic testimonies of saying the blind see. Since then, we've seen miracles, cancer being healed, any kind of ailment, the miracles of healing, just amazing to that power of the Holy Spirit. So here I am serving in the ministries, being used by God, not only the prayer and healing ministry, but also serving Him and doing the kupuna ministry and even helping other churches do their kupuna ministry. About a year, over a year and maybe three months ago, I too had an affliction. I had a physical at the doctor's office. The endocrinologist calls and says, um, Frida, your blood test is sort of two years now. It's not looking good. And of course, the, the word that most people hate to hear is, I need for you to see an oncologist. An oncologist is a cancer doctor. So we then went and I had my appointment with the oncologist who then did a bone marrow biopsy. And sure enough, it was what most people would fear, I guess. 
It's called myelodysplasia. It's a bone marrow um, deficit. They just stop making the blood cells, the white and red cells. Initially, to be honest, is why God? Why me? I'm serving God, I've seen the power of God. And I also reflected back when my late husband also asked that question and God said, why not you? It's for his glory, not yours. I said, man, that's true. Your will for me, God. Then I want to serve. I want to do your will in my life. I am not living a life of woe is me, oh, I can't do this, I'm going to give up ministry. Oh, no. I was going to glorify him in wh how, whatever time he gave me and however means I was going to serve him. That's the kind of peace you get. It's not a joy, but it's the joy of the Lord. But the peace to know that I am not under this dark cloud every day, but I am living every day with the joy of the Lord. This affliction has made me, um, kind of push me forward to do as much as I can before God said, enter into my kingdom, faithful servant. God has shown me much blessings, use me as a vessel that he can work through, not for my glory, but for his glory. I recently heard that Someone we prayed for like 25 years ago with deliverance and then leading them to the Lord has now committed their lives for the last 20, 20 years, I think, as missionaries in Japan. When I heard that, I had goosebumps to say, we serve God, a mighty God, and He becomes victorious in other lives because we were obedient. And that's my testimony of saying, we can choose to be victorious or choose to have self-pity, choose to live with regrets or choose to live with gratefulness, trusting God and truly making Him Lord of your life.